Hello everybody, welcome back to the Do Right Shop. We're here for Windmill Reassembly 101 today. Uh, I've already replaced the brake band. It's very simple, it's two quarter 20 screws that hold the brake band on here. This brake band, what it does when you furl the windmill, you pull a lever at the base of the windmill, it's kind of like your on off switch for the windmill. In essence, if you have bad weather or you want it to stop pumping for whatever reason, you pull this lever and it applies the brake around the wheel or the fan of the windmill to keep it from turning. At the same time, when you pull that lever, it kicks the tail vane sideways. When the tail vane turns sideways, the wind blows against it and turns the blades so that the edge of the blades hit the wind rather than the front. So there's much less pressure applied for the windmill to try to turn. I'm glad I went ahead and ponied up the money. I mean, we live in Florida, we have some pretty nasty storms here. Also occasional hurricanes, so I want the brake to be in top working order. The next order of business is gonna be the, the bearing, the nose bearing. This is a babbitted bearing. If you don't know what a babbitted bearing is, it's a poured in place bearing. It's very old technology, hardly used at all anymore. However, it is a very proven technology. Aeromotor was pretty innovative. They came up with a steel casing where they, in the factory, poured the babbits inside the steel casing so that the, instead of having to bring a torch and melt out the old bearings on a rebuild, they were able to just slide this cartridge out and slide a new one in, which sped up the turnaround time for rebuilding one of these. And honestly, they could probably be rebuilt in the back of a pickup truck bed out, out on the range somewhere. It's got a slot in it here. This slot really serves two purposes. One is for oil to get back down into the Babbitt, but it also locates it so that it can't turn. Uh, it, it slides in here real easy. I've already gone ahead and put some automatic transmission fluid to, to lube it to slide in there and uh, uh, some Rotella motor oil from my tractor to pre-lube the bearing surfaces. Not that that's anything special, it's just what I had that was already open. So it goes in like such, you, you line up the indexing mark here, put a little pressure on it, and it slides all the way in. All right. This is our gear right here. We've got it in the three jaw chuck. We've got a, a dial indicator in front of it. And we're going to spin it real slowly. I don't know if the camera can even pick up that small of a movement, but I'm less than half a thousandth out if I go nice and slow. So I'm very happy with that. So we're gonna get the boring bar set up on here and uh, see if we can't get this thing fixed. Good fit. Maybe a skosh too much material, but I like it. It'll work. What I've got over here is the babbit for the center shaft here. And essentially, this gear, the ones that we worked on, it's the bearing for this gear. And the other gear goes right on the other side. So we need to put that babbit inside this gearbox. I think, now that I look at it, I'm gonna to have to pull this nose bearing out, which is no big deal because it comes out really easy. We'll set that aside right there. I'll try to slide this babbit in here. The reason we're pulling the nose bearing out, it's pretty tight clearance in there. I'm gonna need a little bit of room to work. All right, this babbit, this one that goes in here, which is, it's a bearing has an indexing mark or a locating mark so that it can't turn. I'm gonna take some motor oil, second verse, same as the first. Get my finger in there and just, just run it all around on inside that diameter. Just pre-lubing it, I get, there's a slot in there that collects a little bit of oil. I got some in the slot. This one goes on this side, so let's put a little bit of love on it. some inside that shaft so that it slides in nice and easy. Very nice, very nice. 
this key that goes in here is wider than this hole. And even if it wasn't, it'd be real hard to get it all lined up in the keyway on the shaft in here. So what I did is I slid the bearing on here, put the key on, now I'm gonna slide the whole thing as an assembly. The only little really tricky part are these few little parts we have to add on the shaft as it comes through the hole. One is a simple little spring, and all that spring does is fit against this, this oiler, and hold it tight against the gear. I got you in here real nice and close, and let me show you what's going on here with, with this part of the gearbox. This is what we've been working on. This is one of the two gears that we had in the lathe earlier and had to do a little work to. Here's the Babbitt sleeve that came through the nose of the gearbox case. There's a spring right here, and that spring pushes from here to here. And this, this washer, it's called an oiler, what it does is the spring holds it tight to this gear, and the gear turns in this direction normally. So it comes down through the oil that's in the gearbox, and the gears are picking up the oil as they come around, and this little hook that's right here, this little hook shaves off just a little bit of oil, and that oil drips on this, and this is a little bit on a downhill slope, and it comes down and drips on the end here and runs onto the shaft. Now they've got a hole drilled here in the bottom of this Babbitt sleeve, to allow the oil not to fill up eventually and overflow because when it would do that it would run out the front of the gearbox too and be all over the windmill itself. So by dripping on here and the rotating action it slowly works its way down to help lubricate the babbits that are in this direction towards the front of the gearbox. This is an oiling cavity and it's, it's pretty tricked the way it works. Let me grab the light here and get, get you in closer where you can see. Right down in there is a screw, or what appears to be a screw. And when you take that out, you get this. And this is pretty cool. This is a bolt that's been machined out. And it's got sort of a scraper assembly when the slot for the screwdriver, it goes all the way through and basically oils this thing. And what it does, if I can get you in close enough, you can see down inside there, That's all the way down to the shaft that runs through there, right through the center of the Babbitt. And the way this works, is this thing acts like an oil scraper and it scrapes the oil off the inside in here. So when this drops down in here, we'll put it back in place. There's a pipe plug that goes right here. But that screws in here and seals this. This gets oil in it, and I don't want to say filled with oil because I don't believe it's meant to be filled all the way with oil. What I do think happens is the oil works its way down the shaft and collects in here. Now there's no seal in this. There's no rubber seal, no leather seal, anything like that. So as the oil comes down and drips into here, and this thing rotates slowly around, this is a very close tolerance to the top of, of the inside in here, and it actually scrapes just a little bit of oil off and allows it to go back and drip back onto the shaft. Now, I think that's pretty neat and pretty smart engineering. This is the main pumping gear, and there's actually two of them. They're identical, and they connect together with this shaft right here. The other gear will go on here, and this, this runs right here, runs on this Babbitt. Here's the Babbitt. It's another one of those ingenious things for the time was kind of groundbreaking for air motor because a lot of the other windmill companies didn't do this. They were poured in place bearings. We talked about that before. They actually poured and you can actually see the, the, the pour here on this bearing where the, at the factory they poured right there. There's pour marks where they actually poured the Babbitt in here. But they made it in like a cartridge so you could take the bearing out and replace it. You didn't have to actually bring a torch and melt the Babbitt and pour the, put the form in and put it in place. It's a pretty neat setup. So we're gonna take this, this Babbitt bearing here and we're gonna put some oil in it. Make sure it's all spread around well. That little trough has got some oil in it. Now we're going to take this gear, we're going to put it on there, it's 
sort of drop that in place. Now, there's a gear back here on this side, which, see if we can adjust that camera angle just a little bit. You see this gear back here, there's a, a parallel set of gears right here. That gear is right here. It is an exactly identical to the other gear. That we have to make sure that this gear and this gear are timed exactly the same. Now there's a witness mark, if you will, or an indexing mark here. There's a pin that goes through here. So it can only be one of two directions, 180 degrees out. But our pump rods, our, our connecting rods, connect either here or here to give us our different stroke lengths. So there's a short stroke here or a long stroke here. Depending on what kind of pump you had, whether you needed a longer stroke or a shorter stroke to operate the pump, you could make a couple quick changes within the windmill and set it for different variations. All right, I've got both gears tied to the shaft. You can see that the marks are opposite each other, which means they're timed correctly. I've already put some oil in the babbitted bearing down here. And I've pinned it the way the factory pinned it. Now I know this looks a little wonky, it does to me anyway, but this is the way Aeromotor did it. These are actually Aeromotor pins that I ordered from them. Had I known, I would have probably just taken a piece of round rod and bent, hammered it over. But this is the way that the day designed this to be held on the shaft. The gear goes in here like so. It's a pretty tight fit. When this, when the shaft turns, that gear turns. Now, like me, I was kind of trying to wonder how that babbitted bearing got held in place. Let me show you goes just like this. Now, if this just isn't slickered now poop, I don't know what is, but all it literally is, there's a lever. And when you put this bolt in here, it cams off this little cantilever here and holds that bearing in place. And that's it. That's all that holds the whole thing in. Now, how is this for trick? Square headed bolts. That's old, old, old there. That's pre-World War II. All right, that's in place. And here's how this is gonna work. This turns this direction, round and round it goes. All right, this is the shaft that goes through here. And when I took it out, there's some pretty significant wear on it. As a matter of fact, it's the only part of the gearbox that showed a lot of wear. And I assume that because this is goes to the highest point in the gearbox up here, this this will eventually wind up up here, up and down as the stroke goes up and down, that it probably was the first thing to lose lubrication as the windmill started to, to run out of oil, which it was, all the oil was completely baked dry. So I ordered a new one, a replacement shaft from Air Motor, and this is what I got. I was a little disappointed in it because essentially it's just a piece of cold rolled uh, steel with a couple of holes drilled through it. I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit more from them, but if it's made it since 1940 up there on that pole, it's probably significant enough. So let's get this these pins out of here. Let me explain to you what this is and how it works. And there's a pair of connecting rods that connect to right here. As the windmill comes around, it'll go on here. This will come all the way up to the top of the stroke, and this pen will go through one of two holes depending on which stroke length we want. Okay. You see this hole right here? There's a rod that comes up through that hole and that goes all the way down the windmill tower down into the well to operate the pump. And it gives you a plunging action up and down, up and down, up and down to operate the pump. The way it gets that plunging action is by the wind turning this crank and it goes down and then all the way back up. And this is just a guide wheel here to keep the straight, the stroke nice and straight. 
Now, this ring is pretty cool. I gotta admit, it's probably the, one of the coolest things that I found on the mill, just because of the sheer genius of it. And here's what that ring does. As it comes down at the bottom of its stroke, that ring makes contact with this gear just briefly, and it rolls the ring. When it rolls the ring, this normally was gonna be immersed in oil, so this gear is gonna be very, very oily, wet with oil. This ring picks up oil, and it turns, and it comes up here and drops a little oil through a slot in the top to lubricate this whole upper half. This pulley, or this guide wheel is what they call it, the guide wheel, the shaft, and this pendulum action back and forth. Now isn't that just wonderful? I'm gonna put some oil on this on a few of these surfaces and temporarily pen it in place. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna need a long stroke or a short stroke for my particular windmill setup. However, I've got enough of it put together now that I feel like within a couple of minutes I can make these uh, quick changes. And I do want to get all the, the surfaces covered with oil and protect them from, uh, from the weather elements. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. See you soon.